<laughs> Welcome to another edition of The Leftovers. We are in week two of The Leftovers, and uh, this past week, uh, we had an amazing service. Uh, I, I enjoyed it, and I don't know if that's because I was, you know, the one teaching or whatever, and also the musician, um, but I, I enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you missed any of it, you can go back onto our uh, YouTube page or our Facebook page. The videos are all on there. However you're watching this, you basically, unless this is Instagram, uh, you can go and watch it. So go back and, and watch the, the service from this past weekend. Uh, we had some special guests. We had Spark in the Dark. Uh, Abby with Spark in the Dark was with was with us, and Ryan from um, uh, Goodwill Inn was also with us, and we just had a, a great time. Um, and and I cut my message short, uh, and we still went a little bit over. So this is called the leftovers. This is a spot where uh, if you just want a little tidbit of what we were talking about, or if you just want to hear a, a couple of brief words, just some of the stuff that was left on the cutting room floor uh, from the message, or maybe something I didn't quite get to, and. Um, this one, I actually, I actually got to it, but I, I blazed right through it, and I wanted to bring more to it. And uh, it, we're going to be in Colossians three, and I'm going to read these three verses, and then I'm just going to share a quick word about them, if that's cool with you guys. I'm Brian, by the way. Uh, yeah. So here we go, Colossians three. Starting in verse 12, put on then as God's chosen holy ones, or as, I'm sorry, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body and be thankful. Now, I know some of you watched the debate last night. Um, it was last night for me. I don't know when you're watching this. Uh, I didn't watch it, but I heard all about it. And I, it doesn't sound like very much of, of Colossians 3, 12 through 15 was in it. Um, and that's unfortunate. And that just goes to show that we don't find our hope, we don't find our freedom, we don't find uh, our, our, our joy in government leaders, in the country, in the people around us. We find our hope in Jesus Christ, and then He tells us how to act, how to be, how to uh, respond with one another. And I, I talked about this briefly on Sunday, that this whole point of, of getting dressed— Right in the in in verse twelve it says to put on then as God's chosen ones. So it, you put them on like like you would clothing, getting dressed in the morning, uh, deciding what to wear. These are things that every morning we can decide what to put on when it comes to being a follower of Christ. And 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 so uh, the writer of Colossians, I believe it's Paul, is saying, hey, put on. When you get dressed in the morning, make sure you're putting these on above all other things. This is what's going to make you look like a Christian. This is your uniform. So the, the, this word put on is the same, same phrase that's used in Ephesians uh, chapter 6 when they're talking about putting on the full armor of God. It's that same concept, same idea, putting on. You're, 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 you're clothing yourself with these things. Clothe yourselves as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved. So this is the uniform that we wear. The kids, the, the, the school that my kids go to, they have to wear a uniform. And so they know which grade is which, and they know uh, that they go to that school. It's right on the, the, the shirt. It's embroidered on the shirt. Just like that, we have a, an ability to put on the uniform of a Christian. And, and I'm sorry to say that right now, it looks like many Christians are not putting on their uniforms. So I encourage you to put on your uniform, put on compassionate hearts, feel the slightest touch of another's misery. I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. And we're going to talk about that later in a couple of weeks, but 
Um, put on kindness. It says to put on kindness. Did you know that that word kindness, when Jesus talks about that, or when, when uh, Paul is writing that, he's, he's talking about kindness. Jesus uses the same kindness, that same word. When he says that my yoke is easy in Matthew 11, he says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. When he says my yoke is easy, that word easy can also be translated to the same word that kindness is translated from. So Jesus is also saying that his, his his yoke is kind. Doesn't that sound good? Th- that verse has always kind of messed with me because it's like his his yoke isn't easy. I, I I've never once considered the yoke of Jesus to be something that's easy, something that I get to be a part of. But I do understand that it's kind. So that's really what we're going after is put on kindness, bearing with one another with patience. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. We talked about forgiving a couple of weeks ago. That doesn't mean you forgive and forget, right? God doesn't forget things, but you no longer hold it against that person anymore. If you've forgiven that person you're not holding them accountable for that thing anymore. Now, you've got to be smart, and if they've hurt you over and over again, you learn things. That's why we don't forget, and forgiveness can take on different forms. But we're getting way too far deep into it, and I just wanted to encourage you guys to put on your uniform, get dressed, and love gets put on over all of those things. Love is the outer garment that we get to wear. So is your outer garment love? Is the last layer of clothing you put on love? If it's not, then we're doing this whole thing wrong. My man Clayton is preaching this coming Sunday. You're not going to want to miss it. Next Thursday is the uh, Tarps for Pints. You can bring in a tarp or a sleeping bag. We'll be posting uh, some links that if you need to buy a sleeping bag, if you need to buy a tarp, you can get them from Amazon. We'll send you some links, um, and we will see you this coming weekend. Ladies, tonight is your night. Jesus and beer. Jesus and beer tonight at Right Brain Brewery. Ladies, that's for you. Guys, our night is tomorrow night, so Thursday night. Uh, it is the guys night of Jesus and beer, right brain brewery, 6 30 PM for both come and enjoy, uh, uh, some, some time with, with the people around you. And, um, we will hopefully see you guys either tonight, tomorrow night or Sunday morning.